I am under the impression that all jokes aside, that we have a major crisis with guys and their testosterone levels right now. And I've heard statistics that, um, okay, 30-year-olds today have the same testosterone levels as a 60-year-old man did 30 years ago. Is this blown out of proportion? Do we have new information now that we're just testing more people? Or is this, in fact, an epidemic, a crisis? So it is true. Um, testosterone is lower today, age per age, than it was in the past. Um, I can't speak to that exact statistic, but I can tell you that um, a 30-year-old man today has the the average 30 year old man today has the same testosterone as the average 50 year old did prior to about 2000. So it's certainly that statistic is plausible, which is a little more extreme given that it's a longer period of time. So it's a problem. It's obviously something's going on then, right? Yeah. And I think the most, probably the best explanation honestly has to do with body weight. Really? Yeah. So um, and it's not body weight, it's fat mass. I didn't think you were going to say that at all. Yeah. I thought you were going to tell me like microplastics or something. No, it's most likely, the most the most obvious candidate is, is body weight, right? So as body weight and body fat go up, uh, men tend to aromatize more testosterone. So they turn testosterone into estrogen more. And as you do that, two things are happening. One is your... Um, you're obviously siphoning off your testosterone, but estrogen also then increases the level of a, a, a protein a, called sex hormone binding globulin. Right. That binds most of your testosterone so that really the only testosterone that is having its effect is the unbound part of that. So if you have a pool of 100 units of testosterone, somewhere between 97 and 98 of them get stuck to this binding globulin and another one called albumin. And the only thing that matters is the two or three that are not bound. Right. So as you make more of that binding globulin Less. and deplete your testosterone right. because you're making more estrogen, all those things are going to drive to kind of a lower testosterone level. And I think that that is probably the most likely explanation for what's happened over the past 50 years, which is not to say there aren't other things that could be doing it. Um, if I were going to point to a second thing, I would probably point to the erosion of sleep um, quality sleep because we make these hormones when we sleep. So if you're not getting high quality, deep sleep, you're not, your brain pituitary in particular, isn't making the hormones that tell your testes, not your testes, my testes Fair. to make more testosterone. Um, so I want the, can you tell me, first of all, what are symptoms of low testosterone? What does this look like for a man, how do they know that they're experiencing it? How do you not confuse it with something else? If you're like, well, it's fatigue, yeah, but, yeah. you know, yeah, fatigue yeah. could be anything. No, it's it. So there's no clear diagnosis. It's not like how do you diagnose high blood pressure or how do you diagnose diabetes, where it's very clear and it's black and white. And it, those things tend to be black and white because you use signs. Signs are objective things you measure. Symptoms are not. Symptoms are subjective. Okay. So. In that sense, we have to look at the signs, which are the numbers. So the lower the testosterone level, the more likely you would say that a person is, is you know, at risk of being what we call hypogonadal. Um, okay, that's kind of like hypo, so hypothyroid I know about right. because it was some, so, so meaning the gonads aren't, they're under functioning. Right. That's just the technical name for low T is hypogonadal. Understood. And, um, and so what are the symptoms, right? So, so in a guy... The most common symptoms would be low libido, low sex drive, okay. um, low energy, low mood, low muscle mass, mm -hmm. and poor recovery from workouts, low energy, sometimes even impaired sleep. But now you can see it starts to get a little circular because yeah. lousy sleep can be causing the problem. So mm -hmm. if I were to sort of look at my patients who who are indeed hypogonadal, and then who respond favorably to testosterone, I would say the most common things that we see are going to be low sex drive, uh, low recovery from exercise, and just overall low affect, low mood. But, you know, look, there are lots of other things that can result in a low like, mood. Well, you know, it depends on my day. Yeah. It, it's, you know, you go through a stressful period or things are going wrong or you know, a lot, honestly, situational would cause all that for me mm -hmm. but it would be not that I, again 
Hold, actually, I want to go back to the part where you said in men. Yeah. That threw me off. What, do you, what does this look like in women? Keeping it real with Jillian Michaels. Jillian Michaels. 